can't guarantee that'll get to you. I wanted to start today with a discussion around gamma, negative gamma, positive gamma, et cetera, et cetera. On our little Twitter channel here, we posted this chart before here. <clears throat> so what I keep seeing pop up, let me rephrase this a little bit. So let's start fresh here, Brent. Okay. When you go in the Twitter sphere, you see a lot of this talk about huge negative gamma and that's what's driving these moves and like negative gamma blah 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 and if you look at this model from morgan stanley there's a similar one floating around from goldman what you see is that indeed they show very high levels of negative gamma it's a double negative there right the the gamma is very low record low negative gamma i should say so in, in june july we had market rally you know lots of calls being bought across single stocks there's this idea of correlation collapse so it was like let's sell s p vol to buy single stock vol and that trade probably worked out very well depending on how you position yourself as the ai stocks etc went nuts that trade the, the correlation trade unwound but then you know the s p has also dropped five percent over the month of august and these models here are all showing a lot of negative gamma and this is you know, this is fairly large. Now, I don't know what their S&P dealer gamma, I don't know exactly what feeds into this. As they say here, it's plus levered ETF rebalancing, right? So it's not clearly specific what this is. Is this SPX, SPY, ESE mini futures plus, I don't know, triple, whatever the triple long spider kind of thing is. I'm not sure. But what the point here is that this, when you look at this, the takeaway from this should be, and we had discussions about this in our Discord chat, that the more negative game we have in general, you have higher levels of volatility, right? And it's a volatility, the, the reason you should pay attention to gamma is because it's a volatility indicator. High levels of positive gamma is associated with markets that don't move much. High levels of negative gamma is associated with markets that tend to move a lot. Now, we have been disagreeing with this type of view that not necessarily that there's large amounts of negative gamma because our, our kind of naive metric shows the same thing, but that there is a lot of volatility induced by gamma right now. So this idea that, hey, negative gamma is driving giant moves, I don't, I don't see it. I, don't, I disagree with it. And there's implications for that. So if we look at this chart that I posted here, this is the intraday range. So you take the high minus the day's low and you divide it by the open and we get a percentage movement, kind of normalized percentage movement, how big the trading ranges are. Weird things happen overnight in markets, right? There's Asia and Europe that trades overnight. You know, there's overnight moves that can be most of our market movement. I think the options market has less of an impact overnight. So this is just looking at the cash open or the cash close. That's what our model is based on. Um, that's when all the options markets are open and I feel like we have a, a better edge there, right? So the point is, is that this is higher realized volatility in markets it is indeed a little bit higher and and this you know this, this is august here where the market has been coming down but you know we're our volatility level is in the neighborhood of where we were for most of 2020 and most of 2021 and further if you go this is as much negative game as we've had since the dawn of time, then, you know, th then why don't we have these types of ranges, right? We're not getting these types of major moves. And normally what you'd see in this type of environment, you'd see a situation like on Friday where you go, oh, Powell just sparked a 1% kind of 40 handle decline in the market. That's probably going to spool up, right? Like that's good. That's the kind of fuel that you get from a negative gamma move where you go, oh, we got to hedge this faster. We got to hedge this more that that you don't get that mean reversion back to 4,400 in the same way. Now, as I've discussed before, our daily trading range, our model has been forecasting, and we gotta talk about zero DT in a second too, but our, our model has been forecasting pretty tight market movements, right? If you scroll down here and you look at, you know, we've been talking about this negative gamma, positive gamma thing. But our, our one day implied move has been about 77 basis points. This is the open to close range on the day. And this has been pretty accurate. It, it, we moved past it, I think, once last week. We closed outside the range. Um, I think it was last Thursday when we came down from 4450 to 4400. 
Uh, we had a pre-market open that was really jacked up and, and, and the metric was wrong there. But outside of this, the mean reversion has been inside of this range. So I feel like if you're trading off of this number, your expected one day volatility, you've been pretty happy. So back to this curve, which is our negative gamma curve. There's a lot of negative gamma based on our model here, right? We're somewhere in this neighborhood and just for the SPX, you could add in SPY, et cetera. There's a fair amount of negative gamma here, but what happens when you go lower? There's nowhere based on this model, the amount, the additional negative gamma starts to go away. So this is specifically measuring the rate of change of gammas, you know? And so if we start to go lower, as I've discussed in our notes up here, the curve starts to turn up. And when this curve start, starts to turn up, that means that the deltas that dealers are short starts to actually get more positive. So they're you know short a bunch of negative deltas here. They got to hedge that by selling futures. If that delta number gets more towards zero, gets more positive, that means they could buy futures back, or at least they don't have to continuously hedge into uh, a negative game environment. So, the, so as we've explained, this model is the extreme. All calls are bought by dealers and all puts are sold. And I like knowing those are the outer bounds because I can look at implied vol, I can look at some of these other metrics and say, okay, how much roughly do I think I have to handicap this by to get a better understanding of where we may be? Well, I think we're probably at 4,300 curling up based on the fact that vol is not really doing a whole lot. We know people like to sell puts in these environments, et cetera, et cetera. So the point is, is that because negative gamma seems to lighten or diminish or go away altogether under 4300 then you know where's where's the feel for these giant decreases or giant drops in the market down below i, I don't see them as here as we've been talking about padded downside etc the reason that this matters is because if you're positioning yourself for huge market moves you're you're probably going to get hurt you go oh this is a negative game environment well in that environment you want to be long a ton of calls and long a ton of puts and hold them and look for giant moves and we're just not getting those giant moves right so if you're swing trading futures or you're trading spiders or you're trading zero dt options you want to be aware that look the daily ranges are not that big we're really not getting these you know massive one and a half to two percent moves and the s p was down four five percent in august and that was by and large like little chunks were taken out of the market right so if you were long a 10% out of the money, you know, put, you didn't make money on vol, you probably made some money on some deltas, depending on exactly where you're positioned, your put, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, the market lower, it helped you, right, in, in knowing your put. But, but you know, your, the vol on that option didn't go from, let's say, a 20, uh, 25 vol to like a 50 vol, even though, you know, we got a debt downgrade and treasury nonsense and blah, 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 right? You just didn't get that vol pop. You got a, you got a very early vol pop. When the when the S and P started to sell off, and I think there was a lot of very like short vol covering when the VIX kind of hit eighteen early on. But after that, you know things really kind of cooled off. Now, could it be that the reason we're not first thing I would do is I would say, hey, zero DT is to blame for this, right? But this model, our our vol model's been accurate, and so as I've said before, I think in other founders or in other Q and A's, excuse me, you know, this model is based on markets from 2018, I believe, January 2018 to the present. So this incorporates, you know, zero DTs and the like. So this model is still working from a volatility perspective, even though zero DT volumes have indeed picked up. And if you look at zero DTE as a percentage of volume, you know, we flagged this on earlier, many earlier notes and many earlier calls. There's a lot of zero DTE these days, right? There's way more now than there's been in, in August, really, than there's been before. My theory here is that when vols perked up a little bit, put options have a little bit more value. They're more interesting to sell and trade around. And I think that's what's being expressed here. That's my kind of you know guess at it. Now, all of that being said, um, the zero DTE flows are dominating the market these last few days. Things are very, very quiet, right? And so what you're seeing is, and the reason I say this is because if you look at Hero, and the purple line is options flow from all expirations, and the teal line is options flows from just zero DT. You can see that these lines are basically on top of each other all day long, right? All day long, all day long, all day long. And then right in here, when this is spider 440, things start to separate a little bit and you see some longer dated call buyers coming in. And then suddenly you get a forced, kind of forced zero DTE cover trade here. And, and the S&P explodes back to, the, to its high. But this, this is just mean reversion trading. That's all we're doing, right? We're ping-ponging back between levels. 
That's not something that you see in negative game environments. Negative game environments would be like, market just ripped, there's a dealer chase going on and we get excessively large moves, but we're really not getting that. So, you know, the, the takeaway from all of this is that if you are reading into what the kind of other gamma pundits are saying, you know, you hear this negative gamma and the wheels are coming off the bus. The wheels have not come off the bus yet. And the models yet now are not pointing to like a situation where we should expect the wheels to come off the bus because of how we've been discussing that gamma actually kind of seems to decrease when we get down to 4,300. So yes, the market can come down. Of course it can come down, but it's not in our view likely to do so in an extremely violent fashion. And plus secondary, if you get into this 4,200 area, you can make the case for a little bit of market support, right? So even though we're low in the markets or, or we've, been, we've been getting pressed down, there's no sign of people wanting to really get long vol. There's not really a sign that game is increasing to the downside. You would see if people are adding puts, you would see these curves shift lower. You would see, meaning, let me phrase this a little bit, meaning you would see these curves continue to go down like this, right? The, the, the steepness of this rate of change of game will continue going down if people were adding, you know, five to 10% out of the money puts. Right now, they're just not doing it. We also talk about balance all the time, right? What do puts and calls look like? Well, they're very balanced in here. This is 4,300. When we tested lower, it seems like people were selling calls and call activity picked up. So now you're getting a fairly more neutral or more balanced positioning, which I think helps support markets. You can see put, puts in orange and blue, calls are in orange, the positions are very equal. Below 4,300, it seems to pick up a little bit, so maybe there'd be a little bit more vol, but again, you know, th these gamma curves seem to disagree with that. If you look at the delta tilt chart, this one I think is particularly valuable to the downside, meaning when we have kind of maximum exposure here, we didn't get to like the depths of market lows, right? But, but there's something here for this, you know, where we hit recently, that seems like an interim low kind of in this metric oftentimes. And so what I think if you are bearish, what you want to see here is you want to see a rally up into the 4,500 area. It cleans up some of these downside positioning, some puts can get closed, it may loosen things up, and then maybe it clears the space for you know a, a retest lower. But, and, and as I said in the morning, no, all, everything that I see just says that there, we're not ready to have the downside influence. Now, if, Evergrande in China causes a credit market collapse and suddenly then, okay, of course that can change things dramatically as people suddenly start demanding put options, in which case you would see vol start to spike and you would see these gamma curves change. But so far, there's no signal that anything is starting to happen. This is our sieve index. So as you can see here, you know, at the money where we are, our sieve as our daily move is 77 basis points. Now, this is a gamma based model. It's not based on the na naive curve that that is here, right? There's a little bit more sauce under the hood on, on this model. But the point here is that as we do go lower, you start to see that the implied move starts to drift a little bit higher, right? But it's 80 basis points and then maybe you get a 90 basis points. So the point here is that, you know, if we do drift lower, there could be a little bit more volatility based on this model. But this, this model is forecasting stuff in the, you know, 1.5% range last year in 2022 when there's a lot more volatility so you know right now if you're if you're ringing the alarm bell it's a it's a false i think it's a false ring and the reason i'm kind of like going extra into this case is because there are times where i see the market position for a lot of risk and i say hey this is a high risk environment and then inevitably there's a person who goes oh you're always saying high risk environment you're always saying window of weakness you're always saying this and i go no it, you know these are just the times where i see the conditions in place for market drawdowns there are times where i don't see it just because you see the conditions doesn't mean you're always given it right you need a catalyst right now unless we're given like just a really nasty catalyst something like literally has to be the, the credit market thing then the market just digests whatever's going on and, and we just kind of keep on keep it on right you know, Powell had a pretty sharp drawdown on Friday afternoon. We immediately mean reverted back. Like, keep throwing stuff at the, throwing things at this market, and it just it handles it pretty well. And we chug along. And I think some of that is the options positioning is just not there to induce volatility yet. So that's an extraordinarily long diatribe. I hope it helps to frame up more of what we've been talking about in the no 